Howdy folks. <laughs> Thanks for joining me in the kitchen. Extractaganza number 17. We're, uh, we're slowly rolling through this short list of 156 different kits that we can possibly, <laughs> possibly do. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's not get, let's not get too, too concerned about that. Anyway, today uh, we will be using this kit. Mangrove Jack's Mexican Cerveza. Uh, I picked up a few kits <laughs> just last week. Uh, the local Mitre 10 is closing. Uh, they've discounted a lot of stuff out of their... Uh, as I'm doing that, I've got a bunch of stuff 40% off. So uh, that was one of the one of the kins I've got. So I'm going to use that as the base for this current batch. So what we're looking at is a hazy pale ale, uh, a New England pale ale. Not quite, uh, not going to be the strength of an in India. We're going to keep it down a little bit, uh, a bit more sociably acceptable. Uh, but that's what we're looking for. So we'll be using that as our base, a tin of light malt for our fermentables. And to that we're going to add some good old quick oats and some flaked wheat. Uh, and that's us. Oh, there's, going to be, there's going to be some hops as well. We can't really have a New England without a, without a whack of hops. But we'll leave that discussion for a little bit later down the track. So right now I've got about six litres of water over here, it's up to about 77, 78 degrees uh, and I'm just going to use this to mash slash steep my oats and my wheat. So, that's it. 750 grams of flaked wheat and that's only simply because I've got a 750 gram bag of oats and I thought I might as well just use an equal amount of oats. And straight in, we'll give them a little bit of a little bit of a stir. Now, yes, the temperature is a little higher than a normal mash, uh, simply because I'm not really looking to do a mash as such of this. I'm just looking to extract some of the stuff out of those, so we can get that base. That's going to hopefully create a lot of that the creaminess and the haziness of the New England style. Uh, we're not looking particularly to get a lot of fermentables out of these. We'll get some, uh, but the reality is, then particularly without having any base malt in there, there's no enzyme to really create too much um, conversion. So I, I, I would be surprised if we get more than a couple of yeah, points of gravity out of that. Everything else is going to come from the tins. So I'm going to let that steep now for about, um, I'll leave it about half an hour. Uh, so while that's happening, I'll get me get me tin soaking, um, nab myself some lunch. Just say this uh, extract stuff's not meant to be time consuming. It's meant to, yeah, make your life easy. So. There's not much easier than having lunch while you're making beer. So I'll see you in half an hour and we'll continue. Okay, right, uh, it's been half an hour uh, and something I hadn't really bloody taken into a, too much of account. Um, but the oats has turned to porridge, um, which makes sense. So it's <laughs> put in put in hot water. That's what it's going to do. Normally you use it in, in, in amongst the mash, and you don't really um, have to deal with it. So I don't know how much. Oh, there's a bit there. Okay. I was worried there might, there might not be much um, wort slash 
floor under there, but there seems to be a bit, so. Actually, no, there's fuck all. <laughs> okay. That's going to need some draining, so I'm going to have to grab, grab my rack. bigger box I think this is going to be easier. Uh, I've just boiled a kettle of water because uh, I think I can use that to, to, to rinse out. <laughs> yeah I should have bloody really expected this. But uh, once it <laughs> never just done the yeah, oats or the wheat on their own and they want to spread something nasty. It's very thick, it's just goop. Let's see what we got. <laughs> right. Um So I've bought the oats and the wheat into the bigger pot, added some more water in here, um, and lo and behold, it's coming, it's thinning up. Um, silly me, it's completely forgotten um, the science of cereal, of cereal mashing, um, where you, you, you do your mash at a higher temperature, normally in the mid 80s. Um, which then gets all fucking gloopy like it does. Um, but then you normally add that into your normal mash uh, back around the mid 60s where all that protein of starches that you've got out of your mash with a higher temp from your cereal, oats, wheat, rice, yeah, corn, that sort of stuff, then relaxes and lets go and returns itself back to a more manageable state. Um, so what that means is that now I've still got some lumps in here, um, but I've actually got some liquid. So, <laughs> bit of fucking around. Um, so, yeah. Um, far from ideal, I would um, probably suggest mashing your oats and your wheat with some barley um, but yeah uh, it is a lot of wheat it is a lot of oats and wheat uh, may have been too ambitious anyway um, has thinned up a bit now I'm going to see if I can get this bag back out um, without making even fucking more mess uh, that's not going to really hold it that well. Sink's there. Might just go straight to the bloody sink. At this point, if I lose a whack of volume, it's all too bloody bad. Because uh, 10 minutes ago, we had nothing at all. <laughs> She's still very thick. But, a little bit rum. I do now have a reasonable volume of <laughs> weaky oaty water, which is what I was after. Uh, there's still plenty in that bag. I'm going to get out what I can. What a schmuzzle! That'll do. Run with what I've got there. No. Oh, this has turned, turned into more of a, a brew venture than an extractiganza. Anyway, um, 
Give, give me bloody, give me a couple of minutes to get this cleaned up. Uh, <laughs> see if we can, see if we can move on a little bit. Jesus. We're slowly recovering. So, I'm going to get, I've now got probably somewhere in the vicinity of about, looking at this, about 13 litres in here. I don't want that much. This is only a 10 litre pot. I'm going to get back into this pot. Part of the reason being, I'm thinking there's going to be a fair bit of sludge at the bottom of that. Um, I'm going to boil this and I don't know how well that's going to come up. I don't want to get burning crap on the bottom. So, I'm thinking we can just take... Well, it's still very bloody thick. Um, which is good because that lends itself to working on adding some haze into the final beer. I'm still got shit going everywhere. Continuing to make a mess. That's all good. Uh, I don't know, it's about five litres there. I'm throwing just another litre of water. Because it's still <laughs> they're still very, very bloody thick. onto the stove. And I'm gonna bring that back to a boil. Bring that to a boil. Um, so I'm gonna continue cleaning up and I'll see you shortly. Alright, we're continuing on here. <laughs> I've I really consider just tossing this and just not going ahead. Um, but, um, end of the day, I think there's going to be a good video in this. But um, I'm bringing this up to a boil um, and it hasn't quite got there. Not sure exactly where we are. Maybe it would be a good idea to check. Uh, but I'll turn the heat off. Okay, I'm at 85 degrees. Uh, so I'm just starting to notice there's a, a bit of crust getting a, a bit hard on the bottom, uh, which is definitely going to burn if I actually bring this to a boil. So I'm happy enough that at 85 degrees we've killed really any bacteria that's in this brew. Just, yeah, hanging on them grains. Um, so I'm going to push on with the next phase. So it's just going to, I'm adjusting the recipe on the fly. Uh, so what I was planning on doing was dropping, bringing this to a boil, dropping the hops in, letting it boil for five minutes, then shut and heat off and just let it sit for 20 minutes, um, like a whirlpool. Um, similar to what we did with the, with the last brew, the American Pale Ale. Uh, and then dump this into the into the fermenter. Uh, yeah, I am not going to burn this. I'm not going to now burn this just for the sake of a boil after the bloody effort I've just gone gone to to make to recover something here. So I think we can still recover this bit. 
84, I said 85, that's fine, it's well in pasteurisation territory, so that's all good. So I'm just going to dump the hops in here and let this sit for 20 minutes. So I've got 60 grams of talus. Uh, first time I've used talus, uh, surprise, surprise, surprise to me by Kev Bristol from the, from, from the hopping mechanism. Thanks Kev, links down the bottom. Uh, and 40 grams of sequoia, also from Kev. So in they go. Get them in. Give them a bit of stir, get them nice and wet and get everything all cool together and get them to know one another. During that 20 minutes, I'm going to get the manor out, get it some water in it. I'm actually going to con <laughs> eat my lunch, which I haven't had a chance to with the drama. Um, <laughs> for those who are interested, I've just cooked up some cooked some brisket on Monday. Uh, it's now a month ago uh, when you're watching this, but it's my first smoke on my offset smoker that I got for Father's Day. Uh, so the leftover, I just cooked them up with a little bit of. Uh, Basically made a braised steak and an onion out of it. Um, and I'm just munching up for lunch. It's just good. Anyway, back soon. Alright, I've been sitting now for... Just a bit over 20 minutes. And what I'm going to do is I'm transferring this into the big pot. Um, you'll see why. Uh, I'm going to drag these hops out of here. Now I'm going into the big pot because uh, I can mix in the tins easier into here uh, without getting too close to volume on this. And then I'll be able to take this, take the big pot into the garage where I've got the fermenter sitting at the moment with about, about 12 litres of water in it. And I'm doing that because I don't want to make any more mess in here than I already have. Uh, I don't want to clean up another mess and that's generally what happens when I tr try to pour from this into the fermenter here on the bench. Uh, so, I'll we'll put it in there and take it out of the garage. We won't have to worry about it. So anyway. through that. I don't know if you can see on there. There's just a little bit of dark on there. It was just starting to catch in places. Uh, so I certainly think that um, not going to a boil was, <laughs> was a good idea. Anyway, let's get our extracts in. One cerveza and Langrove Jackson got the ring pull like the uh, Black Rock kits on this one. I've not noticed that on any of the other kits, so maybe it's just a reasonably new thing. So I'm thinking the cerveza I think is a, a good uh, base for this kind of beer. Uh, we want it nice and light uh, and let yeah other things like the uh, the wheat and the oats and the hops, you know, be the, be, be the main players. Enough 
Yeah, enough bitterness in the Cerveza tin to give us a little bit of background uh, without interfering with what our hop, what the hops are going to bring. Uh, that's the idea. Uh, we'll find out in a few weeks whether, whether that logic worked or not. Anyway, a few things going not to plan, so who would know? <laughs> that's the idea, that's my thinking at the moment. Sounds, it sounds feasible to me. You'd be using a fairly light Pilsner base anyway, so... And you'd be going for... Probably a similar sort of IBU. Uh, maybe a little bit higher for you, like for a bittering charge, because normally you do a like sort of a 15 minute boil for your bittering, uh, allowing for you know, that hop steep. So I certainly think we're in the um, ballpark of, with, of that background. So, mix this through. Uh, we'll go out, we'll hit the garage, and we'll have a look at uh, this into the fermenter. Uh, have a bit of a chat about how the rest of this is going to pan out. So we'll top that for 23. Uh, I've added some, about 2 grams of gypsum, uh, calcium sulfate, and about 4 grams of calcium chloride. Uh, I'll talk about that in just a minute. The fermenter we topped up apparently at 22 litres. I'm going to just check the gravity on that before I add any more to it. Uh, so I don't want to make it water it down too much. Uh, Call that 1048. It's a little bit warm, but that won't make any difference to the refrap. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to. I'm not going to add any more to that. Uh, so oh geez, 1048. 1048. We get 70. We get 75 percent attenuation. That's 36. Four, six, four. So it's going to get us in the high fours, um, which I'm happy enough with. I would have liked maybe low fives, low to mid fives, but uh, I'll take I'll take that with the uh, 
with the muck up of the day and given the amount of lost from that um, from the oats and the wheat, uh, which I sort of was allowing for a little bit within the um, expected gravity. So, uh, I'm going to ferment this with two packs of USO5 dry, um, straight in the fridge, not splitting it anyway, it's just going to go straight as it is. Um, so, this will get a dry hop of uh, oh, 50 grams of lemon drop on day one. So I'm going for that bio transformation type of type of thing on day one. Uh, but also that's just got to happen because I'm going away in two days' time for six days down to uh, down to Melbourne. So I'm not going to get the dry hop on uh, till what will effectively be the end of ferment, or should be the end of ferment. I uh, really don't want to wait that long on this one. So that's part of the hazy thing as well so hopefully that's all gonna all gonna work out uh she was a bit of a bit of a muck up nah. brew days can't go right all the time uh patreons have had the privilege <laughs> of watching a fair whack of unedited footage i had the the camera just kept kept going as i was playing around trying to get this sorted out. So they've um patrons have had the privilege of watching the whole sorry saga unfold and the drama I had to go through to get it fixed. Um yeah, which was a shame because I've lost a lot of I said I lost lost a lot of what I was expecting to have in the brew. Now with that let's just quickly um give you some tips on how you you want to go about getting that, that steak done because as I said I just totally drew a fuck drew a blank and really I don't know I was <laughs> thinking now I don't know what the hell I was thinking but anyway to get the oats and the wheat into the beer this is the procedure I would certainly be recommending use your 19 litre big W pot and I know you've got a 19 litre big W pot and if you haven't, I know you're going out right now to get one. Um, put your six, eight litres of water in there. Get it up to 80, yeah, 86, 87 degrees. Drop in your grain bag with 200 to 250 grams each of your oats and your flaked wheat. Um, let them steep for 20 to 30 minutes. Pull that bag out, give it a squeeze, get as much of that, uh, much as you can out of that. Get rid of it. Add another two or three litres to that and bring it, to, bring it up to a boil. Um, and then continue on as the recipe should be. Throw your hops in, boil them for five minutes, then let it sit for 20. Hang on a sec. Somebody's here. Mm. All right, Corey just rolled in with a box uh, from, uh, actually, from the hopping mechanism. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so, Get that boil, five minute boil, 20 minute hop stand, uh, and then you can then continue on. Get your hops out, mix in your mix in your extracts, top up your fermenter and, and carry on. Um, should should have been a fairly simple, fairly simple brew day. Um, if you have the ability um, and the gear, do a do a full match. Do yeah, about a kilo and a half, two kilos of, a, of, of some base malt, uh, Pilsner, ideally. But um, just a light, just a lighter pail will work. Uh, and stick your your oats and your um, and your wheat into that, and do a standard do a standard mash. Um, if you if yeah, if you're into doing your mini mashes, 
uh, and that'll replace using your can of extract and that will give you a little <laughs> bit more room to muck around with your uh, with the oats you, you should be able to mash them at a normal mash temperature yeah so so either way however one you, you want to achieve that end result doesn't really matter there's several ways you can go about it and that's going to come down to i said your equipment and you know your preferred method um you i said usa5 two packets uh 18 degrees um you could use a a hazy yeast london fog um i've got one in there which i was going to use and i just i couldn't I couldn't settle on exactly what's going to brew so i didn't get it ready uh it's the best i think it's called best best hazy which is from white lab which is a new hazy yeast uh which is went to work really well uh, you go you go standard blau brew of new england um, go a verdant ipa uh, if you want to stick for something that's a bit more you know tuned to actually giving you haze but i think there should be enough in this brew you're going to get some haze anyway uh during, just during the process so 18 days just give it seven to ten days to to finish out as long as it takes um cold crash and package up so uh I'll get this get this sucker in the ferment and in the fridge now. She's a little bit warm. I'll pop some yeast on it a little bit later in the day. Uh, and I'll see you in a few minutes, in about four weeks' time, and we'll uh, do a taster on this fella and see where we've got away with all the nonsense. Right, I'm. <laughs> Mid, mid tasting on this brew. Uh, that's her there. She's uh, got the got the hazy we were after, which is good. Um, quick look at it. Uh, we did go with a 50 gram lemon lemon drop dry hop on day one. Uh, Day seven, we started cold crashing this fella. Uh, day twelve, it was bottled. Um, it was bottled at ferment pressure, which was about 15 p, 14, 15 psi. Uh, so nothing added to the bottle. The carbonation's the carbonation's good. Uh, no problem. No problem there. Uh, final gravity's 10.12 from that 10.48 start. So we've got a final ABV of 4.7%. Um, if you were to add priming sugar to this, you'd be up at 5.2, uh, which is about where I was sort of chasing, or ideally what I was chasing with the um, regionally with the recipe. Due to that uh, little <laughs> bit of fun and games we had, we've ended up um, possibly a bit lower than I was than I was planning on, um, but. I'm happy with that amount. Like I said, if, you, if you are both, if you are priming the bottle, then you're going to get that. Yeah, that in the those low fives, five one, five two, somewhere in that vicinity. Uh, it's it's drinking it's drinking pretty good. It's come up a little darker than I was expecting. Um, I was hoping it would. I was. Not hoping, but I plan it to be a little bit lighter than what it is. Um, especially with a Cerveza kit underneath for quite a light beer. Uh, and the Cooper's light, but... I think... For the light, let's say, an ultra light, or an, you know, a light that, the, you know, lighter extract than the Cooper's light would have been good. So, for that, you probably need to go to a Black Rock or a Morgan's. Um, Cooper's only had the light, they don't have an ultra light. Uh, so that would be beneficial, I think, just to keep the colour down a little bit. But the malt the malt flavour in the body it's, it's working well. The the wheat and the oats are providing a really nice creamy mouthfeel. It's very soft in the mouth. Um
which again goes along with that New England feel that I was trying to get. Um, I haven't got it listed here, but I do know I did add some chloride and gypsum to the water to get that softer New England sort of feel, and I think that's also contributing a little bit, so that won't won't hurt in your water if you're just using standard water. You know, certainly not a bad um, a bad option. Uh, something to get into, particularly if you are trying to do a you know, these hazy beers where they do benefit from a softer mouthfeel. The hops are not overpowering. They're not massive. They're there. They're doing. They're doing their thing. Um, I probably would have liked them just a little bit bigger than what they are. Uh, and again, the Talus and the Sequoia, which was intended to go into a short boil before that steep, uh, that would have helped. Uh, so I think that's held it back a little bit. And the 50 gram lemon drop could have maybe gone to a 70 or an 80 gram just to boost it a little bit more and just to bring that flavour up. Uh, but as it is, it's drinking quite nice. So I think just a couple of little slight adjustments and it would really lift it into a place uh, being quite a, ni quite a nice beer. Now that being said, I've just sucked down you know, a long neck with no problem. Um, so it's just drink, it's drinking, it's drinking all right. Uh, I think this would be a really good beer for those looking to go from a basic beer into something that's a little bit more interesting without being too over the top, without being frightening or confronting, because uh, it doesn't. It's got a little bit extra in the malt, it's got a little bit extra in the hops, but it's not jumping out at you, it's not yeah, down your throat. But as it stands, yeah, nice brew. Another, another successful extracting answer. Uh, just to wrap up what, what adjustments I'd be looking, I, I think, from that that I'd make from the recipe as we brewed it. I uh, said so the lighter extract uh, getting added in would certainly help. Um, as I discussed in the video, one, about 150 grams each of the flaked wheat and the flaked oats um, is going to be plenty. Uh, I don't know what happened. Don't know what, where, where my head was, but anyway. <laughs> That's where I'd be going. Alternatively, with that, uh, one and a half kilos of Pilsner malt, 300 grams each of the flaked wheat and the flaked oats and a mini mash um, added to your cerveza kit would be, I think, would be really good. I said, bring that boil, the hops up and actually do a five minute boil and then let flame out and let them sit for 15 minutes, um, as opposed to a 20 minute steep. Still 20 minutes, but just worked a little bit differently. I think that would make a bit of a difference. Um, that's it, which was what the original plan. I think that would, would be good. Up the dry hop to, you know, 70 or 80 grams of your lemon drop. And possibly, you know, again, a yeast. I only used USA 5. Uh, and, I, and I discussed uh, in, on Brew Day about you know, other options for a hazy yeast um, and again that was just a bit of a stuff I just hadn't got prepared in time um, so yeah actually getting a hazy yeast um, may, be, may be beneficial as well um, lemon drops not particularly the, the best hop going for a biotransformation type effect that yeah that first day hop um, you could replace it with a citra mosaic yeah, something along those lines. Check Google biotransformation hops. You'll get the, the list of the um, you know the seven or eight hops that are recommended to use for biotransformation. The ones that work the best. Um, but the reality is, citrus and mosaic are the two most 
common hops that are used in that process. Either one of those, swapping in, you know, for whichever one you prefer would work, but the lemon drop, drop in this brew is doing the job. Uh, that's it, that's another good result from an extract like beer. Um, we're certainly seeing from these extracting, yeah, these new <laughs> angles we extract together, we are getting nice beers. So, it doesn't take a lot of, lot of extra work and a lot of extra, extra ingredients to take your kit beer and make, you know, take it from being a, you know, say, from, from being cheap home brew to being, you know, decent quality, you know, drinkable beer. Doesn't, doesn't take much and there's not anything that, that anybody at home can't do. But anyway, that's the Mangrove Jack Cerveza Hazy Pale. Uh, thumbs up from me. Uh, comments, questions down the bottom, as, as always. Yeah, so if, if, you, if you brew this sort of brew, tell us about it down the bottom. Hints, tips, what do you do, what works, what doesn't, what have you found is not the right thing to do. Um, cheers and a thank you to Little John's Patreons. Uh, helps me keep doing this sort of thing and other experiments on the channel. Um, so thank you guys, thank you very much. If you subscribe, thank you as well. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button down the bottom there. Uh, hit the bell so you get notified when the new videos are up. Um, and if you like what's going on, give me a thumbs up as well. Down, it's down there in the bottom. Uh, links are down there for uh, Kev Bristol. Hopping mechanism. Get all your bulk hops. But for now, until I see you again, when we're brewing beer, drinking beer, talking beer, Good brewing.